So do you wanna live in Mexico and work in the United States, earn dollars, but spend pesos, and maybe scale back the work part of your life so you have more time for fun? I'm Brighton Weston on this YouTube channel. I help folks like you pre-tire in Mexico. So before you turn 65, you can move to Mexico, still continue earning money, but have a lot more stress-free life. And of course, the things that I offer on this channel also apply to people who are younger or, or older, but it's about life in Mexico, living stress-free or maybe stress light. So this channel is usually about my experience living in Mexico, but I haven't experienced everything, so I'm starting to add in these kind of interviews with other people. So today we're gonna to be talking with Mark, and Mark has been living in Lake Chapala, Mexico, uh, I think for a, a number of years, and he moved his business from the United States down to Lake Chapala. He's a, a solopreneur. And Mark is gonna share the top five things he thinks that you need to consider before making that move down to Mexico. And if you head down in the description and you can jump ahead to those different things. And if there's anything that needs to get updated, say someone makes a really amazing comment uh, and I make a video about that, I'm gonna put that video up here in the upper right-hand corner. And this is the first interview that I'm doing like this. And I've decided that for this interview series, what I'm gonna do is not have you stare at a blank wall behind me, but instead what you're looking at is a sunrise over the Bay of La Paz. And this is from Rebecca McDonald. And she lives just outside La Paz in Central scenario. So thank you, Rebecca, for sharing this sunrise. If you have a beautiful sunrise or a sunset or something else from Mexico that you'd like to see show up in my background, leave me a comment down below with your email address and we'll get connected. So I actually just finished recording this interview with Mark. And at the end, we had a conversation that I recorded a bit extra. And that was really about the why you'd want to work from Mexico and earn U.S. dollars. So um, we're going to start out with that. And then I'm going to jump forward and talk to him about the things he's recommending to you. So let's start out with, with Mark's thoughts on why he's doing this. One of the things for me is we're living on about forty, forty-five thousand dollars a year, and we're not living frugally. In fact, we live a relatively lavish lifestyle, relatively. And one of the things that's allowed me to do is I don't worry about money anymore. Uh, I I can run my business, and I don't need to make as much money as I used to. Mm -hmm. For me, that's been a giant mindset shift in the fact that. You know, I used to live in Austin, Texas. My wife, we were used to making, you know, well over $100,000 a year. I was in technology for much of my career. I made good money. And yes, I worried about money. And now where we're at, one of the big ones is healthcare is so much, is so affordable here. In fact, we got connected because of your little video on uh, <laughs> yeah, going, going to the doctor. And... Um, it, and so it, it just lifts off so you can look at your business differently. I can look at those pieces of the business I want to do versus those parts of the business that make all the money. Mm -hmm. And that's a real mindset shift. So now let's jump into the part where it's more of an interview where Mark tells us about the, uh, the five things or so that you should be thinking about if you want to earn U.S. dollars while living in Mexico and spending Mexican pesos. So before we dig in, Mark, why don't you just uh, introduce yourself? Well, I'm Mark Miller, and I have a business called Career Pivot, and we've been living in Ahihi, which is on the north shore of Lake Chapala, for three years. And I've had this business for about 10 years. So we picked up and just simply moved it from Austin, Texas to here. Wonderful, great. And and one thing that I, when I was researching this video, um, I noticed that most of the videos on this subject were really about 20 somethings um, and, and internet businesses. So this is kind of fun um, having folks who clearly aren't in their 20s talking about this. So <laughs> so let's jump into the top things that, that you think folks need to be thinking about when it comes to uh, making money in Mexico. Yeah, the first thing is you have to understand your finances. You have to understand where you're gonna bank. In most situations, you're gonna wanna keep all your money in the US. You're gonna wanna collect all your money and put it in a US bank. Then the next question comes down to is how are you gonna get the money to you and that's, I maintain a Mexican bank account and I use TransferWise to periodically transfer money down. And the key piece there is you have to understand exchange rates. And the other thing is talk to your CPA, 
But in most cases, if you are outside the country for 330 days a year, you do not owe any federal income tax on self-employment income of, I think, somewhere $109,000. You still owe self-employment tax. I highly recommend you consult with your CPA because yes. I'm not one. <laughs> Neither one of us are CPAs. And yeah, and, and find a CPA who's familiar with this cross border thing, because uh, as you said, 330 days, if you're off by a day, you end up staying an extra day in the United States. You could end up with an, you know, an extra $20,000 you owe in taxes. Get that, that tax situation figured out uh, when you're making your plans. That's right. Really, we're talking mostly about people who are in business for themselves, but uh, maybe right. you could say something about people. You're you're in the business of helping people find jobs. Right. So um, maybe you could say something about people who are working for U.S. employers who are actually an employee living in Mexico. Okay. If you are an employee of a U.S.-based company, your company will probably handle everything, including the visas. You're not going to come down here and work for a Mexican company in general. So... Uh, that's where you contact your HR department because very likely they're going to they're going to take care of all of that for you. Wonderful, yes, and I I think that is key. There is we are talking about earning U.S. dollars and spending Mexican pesos. We don't want to be competing with the Mexican people because I mean two reasons: one, it's not fair; they need the jobs, and two, the wages wouldn't be what we would hope for. Yeah, I've been asked for years. Well, why can't I just go there? I you know, my employer won't send me down, but I want to go down and work someplace else. And the reality is most countries do not want you working there. They want their own people to get the jobs. Yes, exactly. So let's transition now into the second point you have about what folks need to, uh, to know when uh, yeah. thinking about working overseas. So the next thing is telephone. I maintain in Mexico, I have an AT&T phone. It behaves just like the, my AT&T phone in the U.S., if you want to have something other than AT&T, Verizon, I do not believe, allows you to keep your phone. Or you can do things like Skype and get a U.S. number on Skype. Because most likely people are going to call you on a U.S. number. You've got to figure out how you're going to do that. Yes. And actually, for, for me, I haven't changed my phone number in probably 20 years. Um, it's just attached to my cell phone. So I also have AT&T. And for me, I have my phone number, my business slash US phone number rings in my phone. And also, my Mexican telephone number is an eSIM. So I have a Mexican telephone number that rings in my phone. And when I'm dialing out, I just have to choose which number I'm calling from. People want to see, they want to kind of feel like you're in the US. So you need to have a US presence by having a US phone number. Yeah, I actually have two phones. I have I have a Telcel phone and I have an AT&T phone. In fact, when we drive down, I have both of them um, for safety purposes. It's actually a great point, and that's something I want to I want to sit there for a second because I have those two AT&T services that are inside my one phone, uh, and if the AT&T uh, which has great coverage in, in Mexico, at least in La Paz. If that tower near me doesn't work very well, I got nothing. Whereas you've got a tell cell backup. So you've got two options in case one isn't working. Just a thought there. Consider actually separating those phones out. Let's jump into your, your third tip. Then comes time zones. One of the things, obviously, if you're living in Mexico, you have to understand that, that Mexico goes on, on and off daylight savings time at different times than the U.S. So what I do is I maintain my computer on Mexican central time, but I happen to use schedule once uh, for my calendaring, and I maintain that on U.S. central time. So when people schedule with me, it automatically takes care of everything and I use Google Calendar, and it syncs with there. Where it drives people nuts is the two or three weeks between each one switching off. I actually made a video about that. You can check that out up here. I made a video about Mexican uh, time, time changes because, yeah, it is confusing. Uh, it is a key thing, though, when you are in Mexico and you can't just set your computer to U.S. Central Time, like Chicago, you do need to set it to a city in Mexico because there are slight differences. And now you know why. Keep track of those time zones. Use a tool. You use Schedule Once. I use Calendly. Something yes. that just 
handles the time zones for you so you don't have to think. That's right. Okay, let's go into uh, the next thing that uh, that you have for folks to think about when uh, earning US dollars in Mexico. Then you have to understand internet and internet connectivity. When someone says, yes, we have high-speed internet, sorry, <laughs> don't believe them. If you're gonna do an Airbnb, you actually have them run speed test for you, and yes, there's an Okla app that you can use and check it. I actually have multiple services. I do, number one, I now have iLox, that's a fiber optic connection. For Mexico, it's pretty fast, it's 60 meg up, 20, 30 meg down. I then have Telcel, which is a 4G, it's just wireless. It gives me six to eight to 10, they promise me 10 gig, uh, sorry, 10 meg up and down, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, I also can run off my Telcel phone and I also can tether off my AT&T phone. And a lot of it depends on where I am. In fact, if you get it from Telmex in Mexico and a lot of parts of the country, it will be what we call ADSL. It's typically you're going to get 8 to 10 meg down. You're going to get maybe a half a meg up, which is enough to run a Zoom or a Skype video call. Maybe. The expression is, manana does not mean tomorrow. It means not today. <laughs> so if you walk into a, if you're going to rent someplace, check it to before it's before you you move in, and two, make sure it's there. I just had iLox installed. I signed up in September. They promised to me in January. It showed up in March. It worked for about three weeks. Then it stopped working for 28 days till someone finally showed up. And now it's been working for the last two months. You have to be prepared. Be patient. Yes, be patient and have backups. For me, similar situation. I have a, a dual WAN router. So my router, I actually have a cable modem plugged in and I have that ADSL service plugged into it. So both of those work. It sounds like your Telcel might be in a similar um, yeah. system where your computer just figures out which one to use. Yeah. Um, but also that that tethering back um, backup is important. I mean, if you're going to be working, people expect you to be just as available as you are in the United States. So you need to make sure you've got all your tools in a row. I know Starlink is coming. This I'm kind of excited. We'll see it you know, supposedly by the end of 2021. It will be available in Mexico. Uh, and that might solve a lot of these problems and allow you to live anywhere in Mexico. This is something you live in Lake Chapala uh, area. That's a pretty developed area, very big expat community there. I live in La Paz. Uh, La Paz just happens to be the end where the fiber optic cable comes over from the mainland. <laughs> but you know, from there, if you go not that far away, the fiber optic cable doesn't get there. And you know, you're lucky if you're getting you know one or two megabits per second. What someone considers high speed here, or they think they have fiber and they don't. Um, they're not necessarily trying to lie. Do they just think that what they have is really good? But by American standards, um, yeah, you need to get the actual numbers from them. Let's go into your, your next thought about really having someone to help you. Uh, I have a virtual assistant, Stephanie. She's in uh, Tampa, I believe. Uh, we've never met in person. She edits all my blogs. She writes my podcast notes. Like right now, we're producing a white paper. She's cleaning it up and making it look pretty. But also one of the things I get from her is accountability. I know I need to get stuff done on certain times so that she can get it done. And she has certain time blocked out for me. And I feel guilty when I don't get stuff to her on time. It's not just the fact that she's doing work for me, which is, and she does three, four hours a week, but it's the accountability. That's interesting. And I know that's going to get into your your next kind of the, the bonus point here. I think you called it time blocking, which many of us are used to is making sure that we've got blocks of time to get X, Y, or Z done. And we've got this client in this block and editing in this block, but you actually presented it a little different. Yes. I time block out things for me. So I have blocked out Wednesday morning where we hike with our tequila hiking club. Friday mornings, we hike with my, my wife. I block off Sunday mornings to go out and get on my bicycle. 
The idea is, I mean, I live in paradise. In working for yourself, I joke, I work for the worst boss ever. He's getting better. I try and fire him every morning. <laughs> but the idea is, is to block time off for you such that um, if you're going to live in someplace beautiful, then figure out, okay, wh when, when are you going to do stuff? And I live with a bunch of retirees. I have no desire to retire, but I also, but I also want to have relationships with people. And so I blocked off times on my calendar so that people can't just come in and take grab that time. And it's particularly for me, I'm, I turned 65. I need time to go have fun. Yeah. And, and that is, so important, um, especially with those with those calendars, like you talked about, those automated calendars will just be popping people into your uh, into where you thought you were having fun. So block it out yes. and uh, make sure you do. Uh, in Mexico, kind of the standard is that people work on Saturday mornings into the early afternoon, but Sunday is is definitely a day off. Um, and you may or may not want to kind of go with that schedule. Um, you know, sometimes the beaches are really busy on Sunday. So maybe you like a, you know, a less, less crowded beach, go on Monday. So you can always play around when you yeah. have your own schedule. If, if you're working for someone else, they might, they might want you to maintain a specific schedule. I've got, I've got Spanish class blocked out on Monday mornings and Thursday mornings. At 65, my wife and I take Spanish over Zoom. Hopefully someday we'll go back to be doing it in person, mm -hmm. but um, we it it's good for my brain. Yes, yeah, and that's really what uh, this YouTube channel is about: is really being able to move to Mexico before you retire. Um, you know, I usually say before you turn sixty-five, with the idea that a lot of people are just waiting to retire to get to move to somewhere like Mexico, and it's possible to live. Uh, in Mexico, while you're still working, uh, you might be able to cut back your hours. Uh, you don't need as much income if you're living in Mexico. Uh, you might be traveling back and forth from the U.S. to Mexico. So there's a lot of things to think about. But uh, I, I want to thank you, Mark, for, for being here and sharing what you know with your experience moving a business to Mexico. I know you have a podcast and, and you have a business helping folks. So uh, why don't you tell folks how they can hear from you or, or get in touch with you? Uh, my business is Career Pivot. I help those who 55 plus who um, want to do something different. Uh, I have an online membership site. Uh, you can also find Repurpose Your Career on the website, or you can find it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Amazon Music, Spotify, all the places that you find podcasts. The podcast does very, very well with about eight to 10,000 downloads a month. So um, please come listen. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mark. And thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully you guys are one step further to moving to Mexico after watching this. And I've got more videos up here and I'd love it if you left a comment down below. This is the first time I'm doing an interview like this, but I feel like I can't, um, I don't know everything about Mexico. I, I, there's people that have been there longer than me and have different things that they know. And I want to make sure that you guys hear from them too. We'll see you in the next video.